Hi, this is Brad Linder with Lilliputing, and I'm here with the HP Mini 210, which is the second or third version of the HP Mini 210 that's been released since earlier this year, depending on how you count. Uh, the original version had a different case design and uh, slightly different internal components. Uh, a few months ago, I reviewed the HP Mini 210 HD edition, which had a high-definition display. Uh, this version actually has a number of different configuration options, which I'll talk about in a minute. But uh, the main difference between this and the earlier versions is that it has a new case design. So let's take a quick look around the case. Um, you can see here at the back that the uh, hinge has sort of been redesigned and the uh, styling's a little bit different from the earlier models. And part of the advantage is you can actually open this up to a 180 degree angle. Uh, which I'll show you momentarily. But first, let's take a look at the lid, which has a glossy or a, a matte display. It's like a little bit of gloss there. You can see a little bit of reflection, but overall, it's it's pretty much matte. This is uh, charcoal or black. It's also available in a couple of other colors, including I think blue and red and pink, uh, purple. The base plate also has that uh, same color, which is something that you don't see on a lot of. Uh, machines. Normally, if it has a colorful lid and a different colored case, it's just the lid that has that color. But here you've got a sort of two-tone design where the base and the lid are the same color, and then the sides and the keyboard and so forth are uh, sort of this silvery gray. Um, while it has a sort of metallic look to it, the whole thing is made of plastic. But it's a fairly sturdy feeling plastic. We've got a VGA port, vent, uh, USB port here on this side, and a single audio jack, which is for microphone and headphone. Here's where the power cable goes. On the other side, we've got a SD card slot, which can also handle, I think, a Sony memory stick, yeah. And uh, two more USB ports for a total of three. Key lock, little door that is hiding an Ethernet jack. I don't love these little doors because they're sort of held on by little pieces of plastic or rubber. Feels like it could break off at some point, but if you don't use the Ethernet very often, it's kind of nice just to keep that covered up, I guess. Uh, there's a power switch here instead of having it on the... Uh, case or by the keyboard like many do. And we've got speakers here, Dolby Advanced Audio Surround, um, or Dolby Advanced Audio doesn't say surround. Um, so yeah, I think that's about it for the sides. Let's go ahead and open it up. And while it's uh, resuming from sleep, we'll take a quick look here. The touchpad is nice and wide and actually has a very nice feel to it. The uh, problem I have with the touchpad is that it does have the buttons integrated directly into the touchpad, which can be a little bit awkward at times. HP has some of the best drivers that I found for this style of touchpad, though, so I don't have too many problems when I'm trying to uh, sort of do two things at once, move and tap. Uh, you can do that without running into too much difficulty. You can't tap on both sides at the same time, though, which is a problem that you uh, have with this style. Um, it's not something that you necessarily need to do very often, but occasionally it comes in handy. The keyboard is an excellent keyboard overall. I uh, found it uh, flat keys, a little space between them, very easy to recognize where my fingers should be going all the time. Um, one complaint, though, is these little arrow keys down here on the side. On most computers, you could hit the function key and then press the arrow keys for home and page up, page down. That doesn't seem to be the case here. Um, there just doesn't seem to be any way that I found on this particular computer to do home and end. And it's one of those functions that you don't realize that you use until you don't have it. Um, and there's a lot of writing that I do where I tend to do home and end, um, or page up and page down, and just wasn't able to do that. Uh, the default behavior is that the function keys actually, um, instead of pressing F5 to do F5 or F11 to F11, um, you would get these extra uh, functions that are on them. So for example, mute, volume up, down, uh, media controllers, um, adjust the brightness, and so forth. If you actually want to hit F11 to, for example, maximize a uh, uh, web browser page, you'd hit Fn for function and F11. You can go into the BIOS and adjust that behavior if you don't like it, though. Um, so there you go. That's pretty much it. Uh, in terms of performance, it's pretty snappy. I, uh, you know, the the version that I'm testing here has uh, Intel Atom N455 processor. It's a 1.66 gigahertz processor. It's not really that much faster than all the atoms that have been around for the last year or two. Uh, it's very similar to the N270 or N280, and definitely very similar to the N450. The main difference between the N455 and the N450 is that the uh, 455 
supports DDR3 memory, which is a little bit faster, but you, you, you won't notice much difference uh, between this and the versions of this laptop that were released earlier this year in terms of overall performance. You can see the Windows Experience Index score is uh, 2.4. And I think it's going to be either the graphics or the processor that have the lowest uh, score there. Let's see what happens when it comes up. Um, that said, I had no problem doing some basic multitasking. Um, I was able to uh, surf the web with multiple browser pages open. I was able to uh, listen to some music. Um, you know, I, I got a lot of work done actually while using this machine because I took it on a, on a day trip to New York, used it on the train, used it in coffee shops, and uh, it definitely came in handy. Again, the nice keyboard worked pretty well. Uh, since I don't love the touchpad, I wound up using a USB mouse, but I actually do that on most computers that I use, so I wouldn't necessarily hold that against it. Um, so yeah, that 2.4 is from the CPU. This netbook is also available with uh, higher-end configurations. The base model runs about $329. Um, if you want to upgrade, you can get it with an N475 processor, which is a 1.83 gigahertz processor. You can also get it with an N 550 processor, which is a dual core uh, CPU, uh, still an Atom, but it's a 1.5 gigahertz dual core CPU. And with either of those options, you can also get it with a Broadcom Crystal HD video accelerator, which is not quite a full-fledged graphics card in its own right. It's not going to help with 3D graphics performance or things like that, but what it will help with is uh, decoding high-definition video. So. If you want to watch 720p or 8, uh, 1080p video or flash video on this netbook, the Broadcom card definitely comes in handy. Uh, all of those options clearly would drive the price up, um, as does getting different color options in charcoal, 329 If you want to get it in red, uh, you're going to have to spend uh, an extra $20 just to get the different lid. And as I was mentioning before, this is something that's really pretty special, is that it opens up pretty much to a 180 degree angle. It doesn't go past that, but um, you know, if you want to hold it up for reading ebooks or doing something along those lines, that can come in handy. Uh, the display is glossy, but as you can see, when it's lit, there's not really too much of a problem with glare. Uh, when you turn off the screen, you can definitely see some reflection now. Uh, let's go ahead and shut down. And um, comes standard with a six cell battery. Earlier versions were available with three or six cell batteries. This uh, ships with the six cell. And I was able to get about uh, eight, eight and a half hours of battery life out of it, which is uh, not the best that I've ever seen from a netbook, but among the best. It's, uh, it's definitely all day computing power. Okay. Now you'll notice that there are no access panels and no screws on the bottom. But that's actually not a problem at all, because this is the easiest netbook I've ever used to uh, do upgrades. Because I'm trying not to hit the camera, it's a little bit hard to pop out the battery here, but let's get that out. Okay, so the battery is out, and you'll notice that there's one little orange tab here. Push it in, and you can actually pop off the entire back panel. Uh, there were two tabs on earlier HP Mini 210 models, and it was actually kind of hard to do. I had to pull really hard. I was worried I was going to break something. This one, it just snaps right off. And so you can see, this is how you get access to the RAM slot, single RAM slot. There's a fan down here. There's a PCIe slot. Um, this here, I think, is probably the wireless card. You'd have to remove this strip to get to the hard drive, but if you wanted to upgrade the hard drive... Oh, and I forgot to mention, this actually has a 7200 RPM hard drive. Uh, it comes standard with 160 gigabyte. Uh, you can also get a 250 gigabyte hard drive for a few bucks extra. Um, but if you wanted to change it to a solid state disk or a higher capacity hard drive, just pop off the screen, it's that easy. Or not the screen, the, uh, the base panel. And then you just pop it back on just as easily. Although it helps if you don't do it backward. There you go, you just push down the corners and put the battery back in. Which again, I'm having trouble with just because I'm on camera, but overall this works just fine. There we go. So there you go, that's a look at the HP Mini 210 laptop.